Yeah. Hello, Derek. Well, we weren't expecting you back quite so soon. Well, there didn't seem any point in waiting on any longer. Where's Mum? Well, she's, uh, she's downstairs collecting some papers. Well, you're, uh, you're looking well. Yes, I feel well. A lot better than I felt in a long time. Well, Edinburgh must have agreed with you. Wasn't anything to do with Edinburgh. Except, perhaps, that it gave me time to think. Well, that uh, can be a dangerous thing, too much thinking. About you? Well, I'm afraid I'm, uh, I'm not a very good subject for thought or discussion. I don't agree. You see, a little time and distance gave me the chance to get things into perspective. Yes? And I realised why you'd had the effect on me that you did. I realised that I'd fallen in love with you. I, uh, I don't think you mean that. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm sorry I've embarrassed you. <laughs> yes. You don't have to say anything? Well, that's good, because, uh, <laughs> I'm afraid I'm, I'm rather at a, at a loss for words. You see, the only reason I'm telling you all of this is because, uh, I've got over it. Look, Fiona... Oh, Derek, there... please, listen. I discovered that, that I was able to feel something again for you, for anyone. And you've no idea how good that felt after all this time. I knew there couldn't be any future in it. Could there? Mum. Well, I didn't expect you back quite so quickly. Well, I think I'd better give you a hand with lunch. I seem to have caught you both in the hop. I assume it's 4-3. I think she's going to be all right. I don't know, Mrs Larkin. He might be awful annoyed. Oh, he will be, if he ever finds out. But he's bound to find out sooner or later. Where is your goods hidden? Well, I've put them up in the old sheep fag for the time being. They'll not stay there for long, not once the food starts to run out. When that happens, they'll be over the wall and running wild. I mean, it's not that I don't want to help you, it's just that... Well, Dougal's angry with me as it is. I mean, if I get involved in this... Oh, Havers, lassie. But it's not Havers. Is he very angry at me? Well, I wouldn't call it anger exactly, more. No, it's more hurt pride. Well, you know what Dougal's like. Just can't stand being made a fool of. And it's him that makes a fool of himself half the time. In the other half, he's really very clever. I mean, in his own way. Oh, he can be clever enough when it comes to making deals and, and looking after the animals. But he can be awful stupid about women. Now, you know that for yourself. I know it told me too well. <laughs> Do you think he'll ever loot my road again? Of course he will, lass. Just give him time. But how much time? Oh, as much time as it takes. Uh, come on, we in. There's something I want to tell you. Hello, Mrs. Lachlan. Morning. Hello. Hey, but Derek, will you listen to me? What was it you were wanting? Goats. Goats? Uh, would you come out and give me a hand to feed the hens, Morag? Now, let me ask you a question, Inverdarek. Has anything funny been happening on your farm? Funny? Yeah, well, now, uh, let me think. Oh, aye. <laughs> he came right out the byre reading his wee pamphlet, right into the pig slurry, didn't even see it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, that pest from the conservation happened last Thursday, right into it, up to the oxters. <laughs> it's not that sort of funny, I mean. I mean, odd funny. Oh, eh, well, no, no, I can't say I've noticed. Well, something's been in my byre eating my hay. Well, the deer are well down the hill at this time of year. Ah, but more likely some sheep will have got it, Dougal. Then there's some very intelligent sheep about the place, because they managed to get out again and barred the door behind them. Ah, well, no, right enough, that doesn't sound like sheep. Uh, unless... Aye? Well, unless somebody let them in, and then let them out again. <laughs> Man in Verderich. I knew that fine, logical mind of yours would come up with the answer in a flash. Well, it just seemed obvious, Dougal. Well, let me try you with something harder. Aye, I am ready. How did these sheep manage to smell like goats? 
Goats? Ah, you know what they are. Beasts with horns and beards and, and they stink the place out. I know what a goat is. There's some wild goats further north, but I've never heard of any hereabouts. Oh, no, they wouldn't be wild goats. Maybe just a wee bit annoyed. Well, they're ill-tempered beasts. And they must belong to somebody. Uh, wait, now. Now, my car was trying to get rid of the ones he's got. Uh, three milkers and a billy. Oh, and did they? Well, I don't know. <laughs> they wanted me to take them off his hands. Oh. Uh, wouldn't have a goat within miles of my farm. Me neither. But what if they were there anyway? Uh, my car was thinking of putting his away. Well, there's quite a market for the meat these days. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, wait, now. Now, you know how fond of them his wife was. Uh, maybe she turned them loose to save them. Oh, never. The Mancars may be daft, but they were very good farmers. Yeah. Ah, well, you know what they say. There was never a fence built that could keep a goat out. In and out of a byre with the door barred? Well, you know what goats are like. I mean, they got in and out some way. Goats are like that. Talk about laugh. Just met Mrs. Mack and asked her how she enjoyed the sermon. Isabel, what's wrong? Nothing. You've been crying, haven't you? Well, would it be surprising if I had? Oh, come on, Les. You mustn't let it get you down. Brian, can I not just have a wee greet every now and again? That's not too much to ask, is it? No. No, it isn't. And don't tell me not to feel sorry for myself. I've every reason to feel sorry. I might never walk right again. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have snapped at you like that. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you ask for it. All right. No more cheery chatter. Brian, I didn't mean to... On your feet. What? You heard. Get up. Come on. No, 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 without the crutches. I'll give you a hand. Brian, don't be daft. Come I can't, on. I can't stand. Come oh. on. There we go. Now, we are going for a wee walk across the carpet to that chair. No. Yes. Now, come on. Come on. I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. No, you're not. I've got you. Now, just put the weight on the Don't, don't let me go now. I won't let you go. Oh. There you go. Oh. There you are. There. Oh. <laughs> okay? No, I'm not okay. I felt less tired after a five-mile walk. Good. You're supposed to feel tired. <sighs> now, if you uh, want to get back to the sound chair, you'll have to do it on your own. Look, will you stop acting the clown, Brian? I can't walk. No, oh, can't you? How do you get where you are? Come on, try it. I think I've had just about enough for one day, Brian. Isabel, I promise you this is the last time. Now get up and walk towards me. Come on. Don't <laughs> lean on the table. Oh, give me a minute. <laughs> That's it. Good, now stand up. There you right, go. you see. It's all right. I've got you. You see. Back you go. There. Uh, there. You're all right, aren't you? I'm not hurt, if that's what you mean, but I'm very far from all right. Oh, come on now. I'm so fed up. But you almost made it that time. I took two steps and nearly landed flat in my... Now listen, your muscles are bound to be weak and your sense of balance is way off. You'll be walking again in no time. Sometimes I wonder. I tell you, you'll be dancing a reel at Lorna's wedding. <laughs> what are your immediate plans? I don't think I've got any. I'll probably stay in for the rest of today. What about tomorrow? What about it? Well, we are going riding. Would you care to join us? I don't know. It's been rather a while since I sat in the back of a horse. 
Of course, I quite understand if you don't want to. No lectures and lack of moral fibre, Mum. Should there be? Yes. I suppose the truth is I'm frightened. Well, that's natural enough in the circumstances. You've just been kind. I think the fact is I'm a, a good old-fashioned abject coward. Well, if you're that, I'm worse. I don't believe you could be a coward. Well, in one specific area, Fiona, that's exactly what I am. You mean there'd be something you'd be afraid to do? Yes, there is. Well, if I promise to come riding with you tomorrow, will you try and do whatever it is you're afraid to do? Derek? For God's sake, Fiona, stop pushing! Derek, no one wants to upset you. I'm sure Fiona didn't Look, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's my fault. Look, Fiona, I'd, I'd do anything to help you. Please believe that. I do understand. It's just that I'm... I'm not as far along the road as you are. I'd like to make you that promise, but I'm afraid I just can't. Well, don't. But I will come riding with you tomorrow. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, a poem. She was only the minister's I daughter. I see, I see, I see. What? <laughs> it's my funny walk. Do you like it? Side splitting, Archie. <laughs> Should I wear a red nose? Do you think anyone would notice the difference? I see, I see, I see. You hurt your back or something, Mr. Mingus? Uh, what? No, I see, I see, I see. See what? Could we please borrow your hall for our rehearsals? I should think not. Oh, Mrs. Mack. Quite out of the question. Apart from any personal feelings I may have about you strutting about in that ridiculous manner on the Sabbath, there are rules and regulations. Such as? Bookings have to be made a week in advance. It's a very, very strict rule, as well you know. Well, can we not bend the rule just this once? Oh, just this once? We all know what just this once leads to. Anarchy. Total anarchy. No, no, no. Rules are made to be kept. Well, we only want to rehearse on the stage. It's not as if we're putting the concert on in there tonight. You see, the routine we've worked out is very complicated. And it's time we rehearsed it on the actual stage. Now, look here. Mr. Murdoch and I have got two very, very difficult duets to perform, and we don't come and do the hall for our practice, now do we? Ah, oh, well, it's different for you. See, Jimmy and me have to work hard to get our laughs. Murdoch and you will get yours without trying. Well... Uh, may I interrupt? Oh, hello, Minister. Have you come to watch our rehearsals? Uh, no, Jimmy. I came to have a private word with Mrs. Mack, oh. if you'll excuse us. Aye, ah, sure, uh, Jimmy. <laughs> well, way through, Father. Going good. Oh, hi. Right. <laughs> Folk are saying in the village that was a very fine sermon you gave this morning. Thank you. I, I was rather proud of it myself. No, you know. I hope you don't think it was aimed at any particular person. I hope for your sake it was not. For my sake? If I thought for one moment you were referring to me, I'd be strongly tempted to give up my position as your housekeeper. And then where would you be? I would still be in Glendarroch. I hope you'll make it quite clear to others that I was not the target. I doubt if that will be necessary. I'm sure the congregation understand that my strictures are aimed at a vice rather than a person. I hope that I may have caused some people to search their hearts, and if they found wickedness there, to root it out. Who did you have in mind? Since I cannot see into the hearts of others, they themselves are the only ones who would know. Oh, uh, and about the subject of Mr. Conway, I hope these rumours will cease at once. I am certain I've read about him in the newspapers, and surely that's a matter for public discussion, not the private searchings of the heart. And if I've a mind to it, Minister, I'll tell whomever I like. <laughs> Sheila, I heard you all back. And as you can see, you heard right. 
I have something else. Oh, get out of my way. I heard you hadn't brought the baby with you. What business is that of yours? What business? Since it's my baby, our baby, I think it's very much my business. Well, you can think again, because it isn't our baby. It's not on. It's just not on. We have to get some sleep sometime. And they'll just keep on taking it. Oh, as if that wasn't bad enough. I had some orders cancelled. Uh-huh. Aye. You look terrible. Yeah, I feel terrible. What's wrong, Eddie? Usual. What do you want to see me about, then? Well, I've got problems. Despite the watch on the peak, somebody's still pinching it. Just have to watch it more, then. We'll have to keep an eye on it 24 hours a day if we've got to catch who's pinching it. Oh, come on, we've only been at it a day or two. Oh, my God! Circles under our eyes. Oh, no. Enough's enough. We're only there to work with peak cuttings. I mean, we're not there to mount a 24-hour guard on it. So, what now? I've made up my mind. Mm-hmm. Got to stop the watch. That's what you want? It's not what I want, it's what has to be. Your decision? Is that all? I just thought you should know. Right. Right, I'll get you up the road. Cheers. Cheers. What did you say to Eddie? Hmm? Oh, just that you wanted to see him. Did you tell him why? No. He looked worried, didn't he? He certainly did, and that's the impression I got. What's in your mind? No. Well, I just wondered if uh, he thought he was being accused of pinching a peat. Well, I'm pleased that the misunderstanding has been cleared up. But if you'd be good enough to get in touch with Ken Calder about it on Monday. Uh, yes. Well, he's dealing with that side of it. Fine. Bye. It's amazing how many people want to buy the estate, Pete, after all. Perhaps you should cut the minister in for a small percentage. <laughs> that would smack of corruption. On the other hand, if the church roof starts leaking again, he might find us more generous than usual. You seem to be getting on very well with Derek. He's an amusing and intelligent man. Amusing? I wouldn't have said that was one of his more notable features. Strikes me as being very serious. No, I don't mean he's a laugh a minute, but... There's a nice gentle humour there when you get to know him. And you've got to know him to a certain extent. I still don't know much about his background. Who he is or... or what he is. Why don't you ask him? I would. I dare say you would. I've come fairly close to it. I don't think he'd take it very well. There's something in his past that just makes him shut off completely. Fiona, something happened between you and Derek before you went away. I'll get it. Mr. Campbell! I hope I'm not calling at an inconvenient time, Mrs. Cunningham. No, of course not. What can I do for you? You can accept my apology. Oh, it's all right. Dougal's not back yet. I'm glad to hear that. I thought I was going to have to have, to have a bath in the burn. Mind you, Dougal's right. Goats don't exactly come up smelling of roses. Well, you shouldn't have flung your arms round the billy the way you did. You'd have been halfway up the hill if I hadn't. Oh, it'll wash off easy enough. Anyway, thank you for helping me to get them hidden. Well, they'll only stay hidden if the wind doesn't change. <laughs> Dougal's bound to find out about this sooner or later. I know, I know. I, I'll tell him they're here when I catch him in a good mood. Oh, goats. I've only got to mention them and I start smelling the creatures. Eh? I wonder if they do belong to Mankar. He must have turned them loose. I'm going to have a word with the man on the subject and he won't like what I've got to say to him. Uh, well, as it happens, I'll be seeing Mrs. Moncur quite soon, so I'll, I'll, I'll ask her about it. Ah, will you mind you do that? Was that the time already? I need to go and feed the hens. Oh, I still think I should have a word with Moncur himself. This is a fine time to be feeding the hens. Again. Maybe they get peckish in the afternoon. Eh? Peckish. Hens, get it. Do you know, Morag, there's times you're very silly. 
I know what you mean. And yes, Dougal, I was very silly. Uh, if you're talking about the letters. I am. I mean, the very idea that somebody like me could deceive somebody like you. Well, it's ridiculous. Oh, absolutely. If I had any sense that I'd known you were taking a rise out of me. Writing as if you actually believed there was a Katrina. Ah, uh, well, you know, there were times when I wondered how long it would take you to realise that. Mind you, it wasn't fair of you to keep it going so long. You know I'm not as clever as you are. Well, I thought you deserved to be taught a lesson. Well, I was annoyed at you for putting the advert in the paper. No, it wasn't me put the advert in the paper. It wasn't? No, it wasn't. And who was it? I dare say all might be revealed in the fullness of time. In you go, sir. I know she'll be delighted to see oh, you. Delighted. Hello, Isabel. Hello. Well, how are you keeping today, then? Oh, much better, thanks. All she's got to do now is walk. That won't be long, will it? No. Have you two been out? Uh, no, no, no. I walk in back to his place. and uh, I'm at, sorry, outside of the shop. Give me your coat, oh, man. Thanks. Oh, I tell you, we saw our mystery man, Conway, go past in his Land Rover. Well, right, well you know, there's been a lot of rumour going around about him. I've no doubt my wife had something to do with spreading it. Well, maybe Maggie did say one or two things she shouldn't have, but it all started with Mrs. Mack. Aye, well, it usually does. <laughs> uh, what was she saying? Oh, just that she was sure she'd seen Mr. Conway's face somewhere in the papers or on the television. Uh, well, I mean, there's, there's 50,000 football fans whose faces are on television every week. Uh, aye, but this was to do with something bad. Oh, I hope she's wrong. I think he's an awful nice man. I hear he's getting on very well with Mrs. Cunningham. Aye, okay. Brian. Uh huh. I've got a surprise for you. Oh, good. I like surprises. Show me. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Steady on. No, no, no. Stay where you are. This is a surprise. <laughs> oh, well done, Isabel. Well done, lass. I always knew that you were malingering. <laughs>